Welcome to Impact, where immigrants and Americans discuss America today. I'm your host, Pamela Anchang. On today's show, we will examine the current state of immigration. Is America today a land of hope or fear? With my guest, Juliana Sakai, a journalist and documentary filmmaker. She is the photographer behind the beautiful Immigrant Project. We also have Dr. Tadius Belay from the Black Alliance for Just Immigration, Baji, a prominent human rights and black immigration advocacy organization. And we also have Melody Klingenfoss from the Coalition for Humane Immigrant Rights of Los Angeles. So stay tuned, this is gonna be a riveting show. I'm Pamela Anche. So welcome to the show, guys. Hi. Thanks for having us. Thank you for so having me. So let's start over there with <laughs> Ju. Ju, how are you doing today? Hi, good. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. Yeah. Dr. Belai, do you like Dr. Belai <laughs> or Tadius? I mean, Welcome you know, to the I show. work hard for it. You, you know, know what I mean? So, you know what I mean? <laughs> Go for it. Welcome All to right, the show. Thank you. Thank you for having me. It's so, so such a pleasure. Thank and Melody. It's a hot day today, but we're really excited to be here. Yes, we're fired I, up, fired up. Fantastic. I want to, you know, make sure our listeners know they've heard you before. And mm -hmm. so you're coming back with some more feedback i'm ready okay so anyway our topic today as we know is where we are today in terms of immigrants and uh, immigration and how their feelings kind of like an update are we living in a land of hope or fear um when you think about the fact this country was built on the hopes and dreams of people seeking economic opportunity or reunifying with family members fleeing war persecution i mean we can go on and on and on and you know trying to become a part of the american experiment However, there seems to be that we're living in a place of where there's a lot of panic. Ju, Juliana, tell me, what what are your thoughts? Do you think we're living in an atmosphere of tension? Uh, definitely. Well, I, I'm an immigrant myself. I'm from Brazil, um, but also I work with a lot of immigrants. I'm a documentary filmmaker and photographer. Um, I do think since I got here, I got here six years ago, and now it's definitely different. Um, for me, one of the things that changed directly is I, I used to help this orphanage in, in Tijuana, mm -hmm. um, but I'm under a work visa here, um, and it's a, a visa that nobody understands, even the, the border sometimes. I got stuck for several hours because they don't understand my status. Oh, no. I, you know, DMV has problems. Like, everybody, ha until they don't understand, I go through a lot of hassle. So there was a point they, you know, they closed the border last year during Christmas and we had 46 bags of gifts for the kids and we couldn't cross because oh no. I thought that was not going to come back. So oh. so I definitely feel that, you know, in my skin. The create panic in you? Definitely. I felt like I'm a prisoner here for some reason, you know, like I can't leave because I don't know if I'm going to go back, come back and I'm, I have work here. My life is here, my house, my cats. <sighs> in spite of the fact that you have a visa or status that legally allows you to be here. Dr. Belay Talios, oh, so, tell uh, me, your, share, hey. share your thoughts on this because you're with Baji. Yes. You deal with this day in, day out. Mm -hmm. What's the atmosphere like? Yeah, so I am uh, with Baji. Baji is the Black Alliance for Just Immigration. We are the only black late national uh, migrant laid organization in the country. Uh, we work hard, you know, to uplift the experience of, you know, black uh, migrants and asylum seekers mm -hmm. uh, in the United States. And also, you know, we advocate and educate uh, black people, you know, to come together, including you know, African-Americans and, uh, uh, you know, black migrants or African migrants in the United States. Myself is a refugee, okay? So I came to the U.S. almost eight years ago as a refugee. So why, again, you know... We have war in our lands in Africa, uh, supported by, you know, the United States government and European government, right? So uh, so that's why I left my country, because of, you know, uh, oppression in the country, you know, in my country, not only in Ethiopia, but also uh, everywhere in Africa, you know. Uh, if you see the U.S., you know, foreign policy, you know, it prioritizes, you know, war, not human rights in Africa, not development in Africa. So I left my country almost eight years ago. I came here. I went to, you know, law school and then in grad school here. And my journey was, you know, ups and downs, right? And, and now currently, you know, our immigrant communities are living under the environment of fear. You know, for, you know, last time, uh, last week, I think last week I was in Tijuana. Mm -hmm. to support, you know, black, you know, asylum seekers. And they, you know, they left their country again because of uh, neoliberalism, imperialism, particularly in the U.S. imperialism in Africa. And we met, you know, the thousands of uh, West Africans seeking asylum at, you know, at the border, U.S.-Mexico border. 
Yeah, and you know, obviously, we're living, you know, under you know, uh, environment of you know fear. That's just horrible, especially now. You know, the president has put in an order where asylum seekers, refugees, well, asylum seekers in particular, will be held indefinitely. That's a possibility. Exactly. Can you imagine the amount mm -hmm. of fear that is creating communities? Exactly. Melody, tell us about mm -hmm. your experience about what is going on now in terms of that fear in the immigrant community. You're a DACA recipient. I imagine this is just not a very positive environment for you and others. Uh, definitely. So, you know, just to give you an idea, we were talking about before coming into the studio, uh, we got a huge grant from the One Justice Fund here in California. Mm -hmm. We got $21 million to do DACA renewals. So each yes. DACA renewal is $495. And we ran out of that money in a, a little over Whoa. a year. So we started up like last year or in around January mm -hmm. and we just ran out about uh, four weeks ago. So just to give you an idea of the impulse, right, of folks understanding the importance of renewing their DACA and what could happen if yes. they don't have the funds available. Imagine if they didn't have the funds available to renew their DACA. And, you know, every time we renew, that money goes to the government. And that's a contribution to the government. And we only have the, our permit for two years, right? So we need to incentivize folks to come renew. If their permit expires in the next year, mm -hmm. they should already come renew. Uh, there are other organizations that are doing the work, uh, and we are also seeking a lot of donations, right, to be able to cover these folks. And, you know, just everything that I heard from my colleagues here just reminded me also that a lot of the atmosphere, there's fear, Yes, um, there's hope that we can talk about it later, yes, you know, for, mm -hmm. for upcoming things that folks can do. Mm -hmm. But also there's a lot of ignorance. You know what? You mm -hmm. have said it because that's what something I was going to talk about also. So for whom do we think mm -hmm. this fear is, you know, directed towards and who's perpetrating this fear, though? Is it just the government or what is your impression about the fear that's been perpetrated and who is it against? Juliana, do you have any take on that? Um, I do think it's it's always the fear of the unknown. Mm -hmm. um, this is all over the place. Unfortunately, the U.S. is something that people um, kind of consider as, you know, culturally, um, how do I say that? Um, I don't know. It, it has a lot of influence in other countries. So in my country, what I'm seeing now, it's almost the repetition of what's happening here, yes. which is very dangerous. Mm -hmm. um, so, so also mm -hmm. in Brazil, we're seeing the same, like we're a country built, out of immigrants, just kind of like here, absolutely, um, and and um, and and still, right now we're having this wave, you know, of, of hate towards people who are coming um, from Haiti, from Africa. Like people are, there's a, a huge wave of you know migrants right now. Hey, if this is your first time visiting Team TV channel, make sure you hit the subscribe button here below and ring the notification bell so you will be notified when we post new content. For example, the Unite the Rally. I want to mm -hmm. look at even social or community, you know, what's going on in the communities. The fear is not just perpetrated by government per se, but there is like a complicitness in it. What do you think about when the communities themselves are entrenched in this fear? I think, uh, Pamela, I think we uh, we have to open and you know encourage this in a conversation you know, about you know white supremacy mm -hmm. and you know all these you know fears you know in our you know in our community. Uh, obviously, the fear is coming you know from the white one you know from the White House, right? Okay. Even though you know we have you know uh, white supremacists you know in our neighborhoods you know or you know everywhere in the country, mm -hmm. but the fear is coming from a man uh, who resides in the White House. The right. So we have. Have to be courageous enough to, uh, you know, to to, to, to address to, it. Yeah, to address that. You know, the fear is coming from him, and then, and there, of course there are you know so many white supremacist uh, groups in the country who are supporting the president agenda, right? And he has striking down you know so many uh, temporary project status, including you know TPAs. DACA, DED, which is the Deferred Enforcer Departure for our Liber Liberian, you know, brothers and sisters, right? So, and then also, you know, we have the Muslim bans, right? Yes. We have so many executive orders, you know, uh, enacted by, you know, or signed by the mm -hmm. government, the, uh, in particular, you know, by the the president. And that has created, you know, fear in our, you know, in our community, right? Mm -hmm. So, but like uh, Melanie said, 
we are still living in fear, but also in our community members are they are cur- you know they have courage, you know yes. we are resilient, okay, mm-hmm. to come you know to overcome all these challenges and problems. Absolutely, and I would even Go venture ahead, to Melody. say you know further than even like white supremacism, like this is the concept of white nationalism, right? Okay, so um, it's like a little yeah. Let's let's make a distinction. Yeah, so <laughs> I actually learned this um, after a conference that I attended in Arizona, um, the uh, National Immigration Integration Conference, and um, there was a speaker and he was saying the difference and I, I didn't even understand mm-hmm. it right and so just to hear him say it also reminded me of how we need to constantly just inform ourselves even, difference even, though? even us three who are you know mm-hmm. constantly in the movement we yes. need to keep informing ourselves so um, white uh, supremacism you know believes that the white race is obviously supreme Superior. to any other race yes. but white nationalism goes even further than that really? and believes that not only are, are whites the supreme race but also like they they're the only ones who deserve any types of social services or any type of benefits or any type of help mm-hmm. so so are you telling me when some of these folks come on tv and say i'm a nationalist we should be more scared than the ku klux klan it's even further than that and it's all connected it's okay. all connected and, and this whole country is rooted in the oppression of uh, black folks right yes the you know the white house was built by by black slaves, by black slaves. And, um these folks were brought in against their will, right? And also the U.S. forgets, we don't even have to look further. Uh, let's look at the border exodus that's yes. happening right now. The U.S. has had 56 uh, interventions in Central American countries where mm-hmm. we they were not welcome, including my own country, mm-hmm. Guatemala. And they destabilized these different countries and have created these conditions for these folks. None of these folks want to leave their home behind. You know, they, there's, they have no hope. Like, what? how far wouldn't you go for your children? Are you kidding me? You know what? You just touched on something that I always thought about and Tadeus, Tadeus also touched on it, that most of the situations that most folks are fleeing from have been actually encouraged or the atmosphere has been cultivated by the West. Mm-hmm. And then now the people want to flee and come over here and you don't want them. That's just so, you know, that's very, <laughs> that's very hurtful. Yeah, exactly. That's very it's hurtful ironic. And, and ironic. So I really want us to touch on the fact that, you know, let's think about what Sometimes you're building a cage, you're building a wall, and you're imprisoning yourself. What do you think, Juliana, and I want to defer this to you first, what do you think America would become on the global stage if it actually went ahead and continued to perpetrate these stereotypes about immigration and immigrants on a global world, especially coming from Brazil, where you guys are dealing with, I think, similar leadership? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm very negative about it. I do think we are about to collapse the whole society um, unless, unless a miracle happens because it's not possible to segregate the world, especially, you know, um, especially today where everything's so interconnected. So I know. Um, I don't know. It might, a miracle might happen. We might see good examples across the globe, not here, um, mm-hmm. rising, and then we, you know, we'll have to change something. But I, I'm really, I want to be hopeful. I do. Um, I, I do think some things are letting myself to be hopeful, like, you know, like the rise of young people going to the Congress or, yeah. you know, changing um, from the bottom up. Um, but I also think the way it is, it's it's pretty, I don't know. I, I don't want to be negative about it. I, I'm hoping <laughs> you guys bring me some help. <laughs> because some hope. <laughs> seeing what's happening in Brazil, it's pretty, you know, crazy because yeah. it is a reflection of what's happening here in mm-hmm. a way. Yes. But it's kind of escalated, meaning he is a little bit like Trump, our president, but it is 10 times more explicit in, in racism, homophobia, and, and misogyny. So so seeing that in a country that was always peaceful, um, in a way, it's pretty scary. So, yeah, please, guys, give me some hope. Let's get some hope. <laughs> what do you think about the reputation of the United States on the global stage, Tadios, well, with all of this? <coughs> I mean, we've prided ourselves as a country, mm-hmm. a beacon of hope, yeah. and that pride now with all of this I think, you know, going over on. Over the past you know, couple of years, I'd say, you know, we have seen... Uh, you know, a lot of, you know, anti-American senti- you know, sentiment all, mm-hmm. you know, all over the world, right? And I'm very hopeful that, uh, hopeful that, you know, we have seen so many social movements, you know, across the world, you know, against, you know, white supremacy, against, you know, uh, white nationalists, right? For instance, mm-hmm. you know, in Africa, have you guys seen, you know, the uh, demonstration, you know, the protest, you know, against 
dictatorship in Sudan recently, right? Yes. In Algeria, in many parts of you know, the world. And I'm very hopeful that, you know, so many young people are, you know, running for office, you know, here okay. in the U.S. and everywhere else, in, you know, in the world. Well, let's talk yeah. about the hope then. Melody, what do you think? What do we need to do to reestablish a sense of hope, not just among immigrants, but the minority communities? Because like you talked about na white nationalism, there are mm -hmm. natural born Americans like my kids and your children who are born Americans. Mm -hmm. How can we reestablish mm -hmm. the hope? I, I think there are a lot of things that we can do, but I think just the, the first word that comes to uh, to mind is just voting. Okay. So the reason why I'm, I'm bringing that up is also because, let's let's even backtrack, right? Um, the civil rights movement. Once uh, black folks were able to get the uh, right to vote, they still had to pass all these literacy tests, right? Yes. So, there were, so yes, in law, yes, they had the right to vote, but they still didn't have really because the right to vote. And so as the uh, black community the brown communities, all these different minority communities were building after the civil rights movement, the um, white community actually understood the power of voting because they didn't have to rebuild. Correct. So they saw, okay, so they're coming up, you know, now they have the right to vote, but they're, they're just <laughs> literally healing from everything that has <laughs> been done to them. But they didn't have to do that. They didn't have to go through all that emotional and, and that um, physical trauma. So uh, white folks understood the importance of voting mm -hmm. way earlier and so they got the um their folks to vote so who are the people who vote here in the u.s they're older conservative white folks and so uh they have built that movement since you know right after the civil rights movement where we have taken so long to even start at that so to the point where some politicians do not target any latinx communities any black communities because why we don't vote oh yes. no they don't vote let's let's focus on the people who that do vote. actually vote mm -hmm. yes mm -hmm. imagine if folks were able to come out i saw a map actually when trump won i mean i still remember that day i don't know if you all still remember that day that Wednesday after that election, it was like a dark cloud was following me the whole day, right? I know. It was horrible. And uh, I saw a map of how the election would have turned out if millennials, if millennials were to vote. And it was all blue. And it was literally all blue. Well, we miss fire then. Well, we have 2020 coming up. We can redeem ourselves, yes. right? Mm -hmm. So... We're going to have to continue this conversation on my one-on-one -on -one with you guys. So thank you so much for sharing your views on us. And hopefully, maybe things will turn around. And this is Impact with Pamela Ann Chang on KPFK 90.7 FM. Thanks for watching today's video. For more Team TV videos about immigrant lifestyles, click on the subscribe button here below and ring the notification bell so you will be notified when we upload new content. We upload new content every single week. See you next time on Team TV.